Lord Jesus, we just bless your holy name. Yes. Just bless the Lord in this place. We declare you the mighty king, the worthy lamb. There is no one like you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Lord. Lord Jesus, we declare right now that you are our covenant partner. And we bless your name, Lord Jesus. Lord, I plead your blood over this house. Lord, I speak your life over this house. Lord Jesus, I thank you this day. You're taking us into a place of new beginnings. Lord, I thank you today. You're bringing us into a place of fresh anointing. Lord, I thank you today that you're removing fleshiness from this house. And Lord, you're bringing us to a place, Lord, of walking in the Spirit in everything that we do, Lord Jesus. Lord, we just cry out to you this morning. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the more that you're pouring out. Mm. I thank you for the Zoe life that you're pouring out. Lord, I thank you that you're pushing us forward, Lord God. And we bless your holy name. And Lord Jesus, we just ask that you would release an anointing of acceleration over this house today. An anointing of glory over this house today. Lord, an anointing of power over this house today to prevail and to overcome in you. Lord Jesus, in your precious name, we say yes to you today, Lord. And Lord Jesus, we say no to everything that's not of you, Lord. Lord, I thank you right now that you're stripping things away. I thank you right now, Lord Jesus, you're moving obstacles out of the way. Lord, I thank you right now you're preparing us for the amazing things that you're about to do. Lord, you said recently, I'm setting things up in the timeline. And Lord, I thank you we're coming into those things that you're setting up. Mm, and we just bless your name for that right now, Lord Jesus. You're the God who was and is and is to come. And we love you and we trust you and we bless you, Lord. And Lord, as we have now entered into 2022, Lord Jesus, we declare that this is the year of the Lord's favor. And this is the day of the vengeance of our God. Lord, we declare this year you're, you're bringing things to completion and you're starting new things. Lord, you're closing doors and you're opening doors. Lord, I thank you in this new year. You're putting things behind us and moving us forward, Lord. And Lord Jesus, we just say yes and amen to that. Holy Spirit, I ask now that your power, your presence, your anointing, will flow like a river in this word that's about to be released. And Lord Jesus, we ask this in your precious name. Father, may you release an anointing, a breakthrough in this room today Amen. through the power of the Holy Spirit. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Woo, so
Somebody say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Is anybody excited about the Lord Jesus? Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank Hallelujah. You, Lord. oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Woo, we just bless the name of the Lord. Oh, don't we in this place? Oh, we just bless the name of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory. So the lights are coming on this morning. How many are ready? Woo. Glory to receive from the Lord this morning. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we just give this time and the word to you right now. Holy Spirit, we ask for a word that's going to awaken us to what it is that you're about to release in our lives in 2022. Lord, give us eyes that, that see and ears that hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. And Lord, I just ask you to have your way. Lord Jesus, have your way. Lord Jesus, in humility and surrender, we completely give 2022 to you, Lord Jesus. In humility and surrender, we completely give this year to you, Lord. And Lord, now that we're completely awake, we just say, God, let's got this. We just surrender to you and we just bless you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. All right. Cindy, how are we doing on the sound? You good? Amen. Thank you. Amen. Okay, hallelujah. Are we working now? Sounds like we're working now. All right, hallelujah. If you got the word with you, let's go to Acts chapter 27. Acts chapter 27 today. Hallelujah. How many are ready to receive a word from the Lord? Yes, amen. amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Glory. The title of the word that, that God's going to release to us today is the time is up. Hallelujah. The time is up. And that word should get us excited this morning because I'm decreeing and declaring over us in the name of Jesus that the time is up on every lie of the enemy. The time is up on every misconception of the enemy. The time is up on every misconstruing of the enemy in Jesus' name. We're just declaring that the time is up. How many received that in Jesus' name? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And we want to keep in mind this year that the Lord is saying, even though this year is not always going to be an easy year, and the Lord doesn't want us to go into this year thinking it's going to be all sunshine and rainbows, the Lord wants us to go into this year understanding that no matter what happens, He alone is God. Yeah. No matter what happens, He's got it. Can I hear an amen? Yeah. Our God has got it. And even in the midst of some uncomfortable things this year, God is going to do amazing things. The question is going to be, what is our focus on? Anybody hear that in the Lord? The question is, what is our focus on? And we need to keep our eyes focused on the Lord Jesus this year. Amen. He is the author and he is the finisher. Can I hear an amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So let's go to Acts chapter 27 today and we're going to start in verse 13. Acts chapter 27 and verse 13. And I believe God's going to use this word to prepare us for what is going to come in the new year. Amen. Can I hear an amen? amen? God's going to prepare us for what is going to come in the new year. So let's stand to honor the word of the Lord. Acts chapter 27 and verse 13. Hallelujah. 
And this is what the word says. When a gentle south wind began to blow, they thought they had obtained what they wanted. So they weighed anchor and they sailed along the shore of Crete. Before very long, a wind of hurricane force called a nor'easter swept across or swept, swept down from the island and the ship was caught by the storm and could not head into the wind. So they gave way to it and were driven along. And as we passed to the lee of a small island called Caught Up, we were hardly able to make the lifeboat secure. And when the men had hoisted it abroad, they passed ropes under the ship itself to hold it together, fearing that it would run aground on the sandbars of Citrus. They lowered the sea anchor and let the, and let the ship be driven along. We took, to, we took such a violent battering from the storm that the next day they began to, to throw the cargo overboard. On the third day, they threw the ship's tackle overboard with their own hands. And when neither the sun nor the stars appeared for many days, and the storm continued raging, we finally gave up all hope of being saved. Hmm. Let's be seated this morning. Let me ask you a question. Has anybody ever felt like that? Has ever, anybody ever been at that place in the Lord where you feel like all hope is gone? Has anybody ever been in that place in the Lord where you feel like giving up? The Lord is saying today that we need to understand that any amount of testing that we're going to go through in this, this upcoming year that we've just entered into has an element of time attached to it. Let me say that again. It has an element of time attached to it. I think sometimes when we go through things, we think that this thing is just going to go on and on and on and on. But the Lord wants us to understand in any testing, any trial, any difficult things that we go through this year, there's an element of time attached to it. Whatever you're dealing with is time sensitive. I want you to think about that this morning. Whatever you're dealing with is time sensitive. It can only go as far as God allows it to go. It can only go as long as God allows it to go. How many are receiving that in the Lord right now? Hallelujah. Sometimes we go through things and, and we just kind of get this idea that, you know what, this thing is going to go on and on and on and there's not going to be an end to it. And God, where are you? We've got to understand that God is the one that sets the beginning and the end of everything. Yes. And God is setting a boundary on the things that you're going to go through this year. They're only going to go so far. How many receive that in the Lord? Amen. But God wants us to also understand this. With our mouth and with our attitude, we can stretch the testing longer than what God wants it to go. Yes. Amen. If we're not careful, with our mouth and with our attitude, we can stretch this out longer than what God wants it to go. How many are understanding that? Yes. So in the midst of the things that go on this year, God wants us to watch what we say with our mouths. He wants us to have our mouths under submission to him. How many receive that? The Lord says, watch our attitudes. He wants us to have our attitudes in a place of submission and surrender to him. How many are willing to receive that in the Lord? So God is putting a boundary on the things that are going to happen this year. We want to stay within the Lord's timing. We don't want to run ahead of him. We don't want to wait behind him. But we want to walk step by step with the Lord in this new year. I want you to look at it this way. We are yoked with him in this new year. When animals are yoked, there's two sides to the yoke. Two animals are in it. There's a strong side and a weak side. And the stronger animal is put on the strong side. The weaker animal is put on the weak side. So the weaker can be led by the stronger. And the Lord is saying this year that he wants us to be yoked with him. 
We are yoked with Christ Jesus. And how many know the Lord is in the strong side of the yoke and we're in the weak side, but in our weakness, he is strong. Yes. Does anybody receive that in the Lord? Yes. In our weakness, he is strong. Do you receive that in the Lord yes. this morning? Yes. So there's not anything that we're going to go through that God doesn't have. Amen? Amen. And the Lord says in 2022, the Lord doesn't want us to attempt to force things to happen. We need to allow things to birth naturally in the spirits. Is anybody receiving that in the Lord? The Lord says in the new year, he doesn't want us to try to force things to happen. He wants us to allow things to birth naturally in the realm of the spirit. That's why Scott was talking about earlier, as he was ministering on Friday night, he was talking about the fact that when it's time for the baby to come, the baby's going to come. But sometimes the woman in labor wants to force that process. And what does the doctor say? Don't push. Don't push. But yet at that very moment, what does the woman feel like doing? Pushing. Let's get this thing through. Let's get this thing over with. The Lord says this year, push when he says to push. He says, wait when he says to wait. He said, hold when he says to hold. How many receive that in the Lord? Amen. We want to stay in God's timing. The Lord said, I have to laugh. As the Lord was releasing this word in the secret place, I heard the Lord say, there's going to be no C-sections this year. <laughs> he says, there's going to be no C-sections this year. How many are willing to receive that? All right. A C-section is man's scheduled time of delivery. God says, there's going to be no C-sections this year. And in fact, right after he said that, right after I heard him say, tell my people no C-sections this this year, I heard him say, don't talk, listen. Amen. He said, don't talk, listen. Yes, this will be a year of intercession, but the Lord says, do more listening than talking. Because he wants us to hear his voice. Things are birthed naturally in the spirit. Even when there's an element of violence to them, things are birthed naturally in the spirit. And God is bringing this house into the realm of violence this year. Come on. What did the Lord say about John the Baptist? Since that time, the kingdom of heaven has been taken by force or violence and violent or forceful saints take it. God is going to bring us into a place of deeper forcefulness in the spirit this year of speaking to mountains and seeing them moved. Can I hear an amen? amen. amen. But yet the Lord says in the midst of the force forcefulness, don't forget to surrender. The Lord is saying in the midst of the power, don't forget to be meek because meekness is power under submission. So as you see God release a greater power anointing in your life this year, keep that under submission to the Lord. Yes. Can I hear an amen? amen? It's not your power, it's his power. Amen. It's not your timing, it's his timing. Amen. It's not your alignment, it's his alignment. Amen. Can we hear an amen? amen? And God wants us to go through this new year on our knees before him. And I heard the Lord say for this year, I heard him say, now is the time that we can learn in the Spirit. Be still and learn everything that you can. Because we're going to see the Holy Spirit ministering as the teacher this year like never before. And Holy Spirit is going to draw us into his holy classroom and he's going to teach us like never before. Does anybody receive that in the Lord? Yes. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. So be willing to go into the classroom of the Lord. But keep in mind, you may have to stay in that classroom longer than God wanted you to stay in that classroom if you don't listen the way that he wants you to listen. So the Lord says this is the year that we're going to listen and we're going to learn from the Holy Spirit like never before. 
But it doesn't mean that there's not going to be Northeasters this year. Mm -hmm. We've got to understand that in Missouri, we call them Nor'easters. We just cut off a few letters, but that's what you do when you speak in Missourian. But the Lord said there will be some Northeasters this year. Expect it. Yes. Expect it. Which brings us up to the question, what is a Northeaster? We see this in Acts chapter 27. A Northeaster is a strong wind or storm coming from the Northeast. Yes. Now that makes sense. But then the remainder of the second part of the definition is this, a violent storm. The Lord says there's going to be some violent storms this year. Let me say that again. The Lord says there's going to be violent storms this year, but be of good cheer. He's overcome the storm. He's overcome the wind. He's overcome the waves. Our God is overcome. Yes. And we need to realize this in the Lord. The question during the storm is are you going to be willing to go into the classroom of the Holy Spirit and listen to what God is saying in the midst of the storm? Does anybody receive that in the Lord? I'm telling you this year that the Holy Spirit is going to be teaching and revealing and giving revelation like never before. That's why the Spirit of God is saying, don't talk, listen. I think so many times we go in the secret place and we talk, 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 and I want, I want, I want, and Lord, Lord, Lord. The Lord is saying, go near to listen, not to talk as much this year. Does anybody receive that in the Lord? Amen. 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 All right. Hallelujah. And the Lord also says something to us this year that we need to understand. You don't know how much faith you've got until the storm hits. You don't know what you're dealing with until the storm hits. Because when the storm hits, God reveals what's inside. The storm's not necessarily as much about what's going on outside as it is about what's going on inside. And the Lord says, in the storm this year, I'm going to reveal to you what's on the inside. And that's when I'm going to take you into the classroom and we're going to begin to deal with things. This is the year where God's going to initiate things internally that are then going to manifest externally. And God's doing that not only in you, he's going to do that corporately in this house. God is going to deal with things internally that are then going to flow externally from this house. Mm -hmm. yes. Everything that God is going to do this year is going to be foundational. We're going to need to listen and then we're going to need to obey. How many receive that in the Lord? Yes. Now, we've got to understand if anybody in the word other than the Lord himself was a man of destiny, it was the Apostle Paul. How many are willing to receive that? Amen. And the Apostle Paul was walking in a prophetic word from the Lord. I want us to understand something. Let's go to Acts chapter 9 and verse 15. We've got to understand the power of the words that God speaks over our life. So Paul, the Apostle Paul, has an encounter with the Lord when he's Saul, when he's on the road. And as he's on the road to Damascus, how many know the Lord knocks him off his horse? He has an encounter with God. God puts blindness upon him. And then the Lord tells him to go into a certain city, the city he was going to, Damascus, and wait at a certain house because God was going to do something. Can I hear an amen? Amen. So God has strategically placed an intercessor in that town. This is the year of strategic placement in the Lord. This is the year where you're going to come into alignment with the strategic placing of God on your life. The Lord said in 2021, some in the body were out of alignments. The Lord is saying, I'm bringing you back into alignment. Can I hear an amen? amen? God says, I'm bringing you back into alignment. So God is aligning. He always has an intercessor in a place of alignment. Now I want you to notice what the word says. Ananias was in his time of prayer. And as he's praying, the Lord speaks to him. 
the Lord actually takes him into a vision and the Lord calls him by name Ananias. Now Ananias means the Lord is gracious. How many know this morning the Lord is gracious? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And the Lord speaks to him and he says Ananias and Ananias does the thing that we need to make sure that we do this year when the Lord speaks. What's his response? His response is not, Lord, I'm still in the middle of my wish list. Mm -hmm. His response is not, Lord, hold on, I'm still talking. Mm -hmm. He stops and his response is, yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. And the Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying in a vision, he's seen a man named Ananias come and place hands on him to restore his sight. Isn't that interesting? See, Paul had been walking in spiritual blindness. Even though he memorized the Torah as a youth, even though he knew the word backwards and forward, he didn't know the God of the word. He was walking in spiritual blindness. And when God knocks him off the horse... God just now manifests in the natural on his body what he'd been walking in spiritually the whole time. And that was blindness. But God is going to use Ananias to take that blindness off of him. How many are willing to receive that? But Ananias has to be in position, number one. And then number two, he has to be obedient to what the Lord is telling him to do. This year, the Lord says, I'm going to put you in position and then I want you to be obedient to me in what I'm telling you to do. Amen. Is anybody willing to receive that in the Lord? Yes. Okay, now this is what we need to understand. As he is praying, the Lord says, you're going to pray for a man named Saul. He knows who Saul is. <laughs> He's an intercessor. He understands the murderous threats of this man. He understands what Saul is coming to do. And he knows it could put his very life on the line going to pray for this man. So Ananias responds in the flesh. Lord, Ananias answered, I've heard many reports about this man and all the harm that he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And he's come here with authority. How many know not God's authority? Or not the man's authority is what he's walking in. Yes. The Lord says in this upcoming year, you're not going to walk under man's authority. You're going to walk in God's authority. Amen. Do you receive that in the Lord? Yes. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. He's, and so Lord, Ananias replies, I've heard many reports about this man and all the harm he's done to your saints in Jerusalem. And he's come here with authority from the chief priests to arrest all who call on your name. Mm -hmm. In this year, the great divide between the religious church and the remnant church is going to continue to widen. And wow. church, the time is coming when those who really call on the name of the Lord are going to become suspect in the eyes of the chief priests in our generation. Those that are religious and want to continue to play church are going to begin to persecute those who have a heart after God and are part of the remnants. Mm -hmm. Expect this to happen. How many receive this in the Lord? Amen. But the Lord said to Ananias, and the Lord is speaking here prophetically, go! The, hmm, there's that word again. <laughs> go! This man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles and their kings and before the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. So what did God call Paul? His chosen instrument. You've got to understand this year, you are God's chosen instrument. Somebody say, I'm God's chosen instrument. I'm God's chosen. You are God's chosen instrument. When he goes to move you into alignment with his will and his calling in your ministry that he put within you before the foundations of the world were laid, don't say, God, why me? Mm -hmm. Say, God, why not me? Because the Lord says you're coming in the season this year. 
The Lord says you're coming in the season. I'm watching ministries come in the season. I'm watching hearts come in the seasons. I'm watching your healing and deliverance come to you to prepare you for your breakthrough season in the Lord. What's your responsibility? Surrender. Mm -hmm. Your responsibility is to surrender to the Lord. Can I hear an amen? amen? That's the heart of the Lord this year. Surrender, surrender, surrender. I see us on our knees all year long. And as we're on our knees, I see the power of God manifesting. I see the glory cloud of the Lord coming. I see His power being released. Does anybody believe that in the Lord? Amen. Amen. We've got to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. But I want you to notice something. Notice the word that God spoke. Go! This man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles and their kings, before the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. How many know that suffering doesn't mean you're out of the Lord's will? And we've got to understand that in the church. Well, there's suffering that's going on right now. I need to rebuke the enemy. No, the Lord said he's going to suffer at my will for my name. But in the midst of suffering, there's always a teaching. And the Lord says, many will pray for the power of my resurrection. Very few will dare to pray for the fellowship of my suffering. Mm -hmm. Does anybody hear that word in the yeah. spirit right now? Amen. So we want to stand firm and surrender to the Lord in this year. Now, if we go back to Acts chapter 27, Paul is in a mess. He's on a ship that's going to be shipwrecked. It's going to be broken apart. It's going to be a mess. But let me ask you a question. Does Paul need to fear for his life? No. Nope. No. Why? Because he's being upheld by a prophetic word. What's the prophetic word? He's God's chosen instrument. Can I hear an amen? amen. In the storms you're going to go through, you are God's chosen instrument. You are walking on a prophetic word. You're sustained by the word of God. How many know the word of God says everything around us is sustained by his word? Okay, that means you are sustained by his word also. Mm -hmm. Yes. So when you go through storms this year, Geo, you're sustained by his word. As you go through storms this year, Oli, you are sustained by the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Just because you're in a storm doesn't mean you're out of the will of the Lord. In the midst of the storm, we've got to stop and listen to what the Spirit of God is trying to teach us. Mm -hmm. But in the midst of the storms this year, he's saying, you'll go through the floodwaters, but you won't be drowned. Amen. You'll go through the fire, but you won't be burned. Yeah. Is anybody receiving that in the Lord? Amen. Yes. So stop in the midst of the storm this year with faith, believing I'll go through the storm, but I'm not going to be drowned. I'll go through the refiner's fire and I'm not going to be burned. So I'm going to purpose to get on my knees and listen. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes in the midst of the storm, the Lord speaks louder than he does when things are going well. The Lord says, you will hear my voice loudly in the midst of the storm. Am I not the one who met the three Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace? Am I not the one who... who mm, burned up the ropes that bound them? Am I not the one that walked with them in the fiery furnace? And the Lord says, I will walk with you in the fiery furnaces of this upcoming season. The Lord says, I've got you and I uphold you with my mighty right arm. Do you receive that in the Lord? Amen. Amen. So I'm going to say this again in the Lord because this is so important. You don't know how much faith you have until the storm hits. God's going to show you this this year. Amen? And he wants you to understand this. You're not exempt from trouble because you're in the will of the Lord. But you have his grace on your life to get through it. So you're not exempt from trouble 
because you're in the will of God. But He's poured out the grace over your life to get through any trouble that's going to come. And church, this is going to be a year of great change. Don't go into this year trying to hold on to things. Mm -hmm. Don't go into this year trying to keep things in your order. This is the year where God wants to mess up your hair. This is the year where God wants to rearrange the furniture. This is the year where God wants to change everything. And He's going to change you in the process. Can I hear an amen? amen? All right. Now we've got to understand something about Paul in the storm that he's in in Acts chapter 27. And this is what it is. Paul asked for the storm. Paul asked for the storm. I'm going to say this in love. Some of you have prayed dangerous prayers that are now about to come about in your life and manifest. And some of them are going to bring storms. Don't get up on the bow of the ship and start rebuking the storm. Get on your knees and ask God, God, what are you doing in me in the midst of this storm? Because some of your dangerous prayers are going to manifest in storms. But you know what a storm does? It many times moves things from one place to another. You see this northeaster that they were in could have winds up to 60 to 70 miles an hour. That's going to move things. You know, all my family's in Missouri, and on a cycle, that Mississippi River that flows right along the banks of, uh, of Hannibal, Missouri, where my family lives, that mm, river will overflow its banks and flood in cycles. Now, the town of Hannibal got wise. They built floodgates downtown so that when the flood comes, they can put up the floodgates and the downtown area won't get destroyed in every cycle. That was a smart thing. But you know what happens down around Hannibal every time it floods? When the floods happen, things get taken from one place to another. They get moved from one person's property along the river to someone else's. You never know if you live on the river on the Mississippi what's going to wash up on your property when a flood takes place. The floods and the storms that you're going to go through this year are going to move things in your life from one place to another. They're going to move you from one place in the Lord to another place. How many are willing to receive that? But you've got to stay in the midst of the storm. Paul was in the storm because he asked for it. Paul was in the boat because he asked for it. How? Because when he was before his people on trial, he said, I want to appeal to Caesar. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing. Because he was a Roman citizen, when he said, I want to appeal to Caesar, what happened? That sent him on a course to have to go to Rome. Mm -hmm. How was he going to get to Rome? By ship. That's the only way that he was going to be able to get there in a reasonable amount of time. So he said, I want to appeal to Caesar. It was his legal right to do so. That's why he was on the ship. He requested the storm. But that storm was going to move him from one place to another. And the storms you're going to go through are going to move you from one place in the Lord to another. How many are willing to receive that? Amen. Amen. Now it's interesting that the Caesar that he wanted to appeal to was no other than a Caesar by the name of Nero. And this was the most wicked Caesar that the Roman Empire had ever seen. We could argue it was the most wicked Caesar the Roman Empire would ever see. This was the Caesar that hated Christians so much that when he had orgies out in his gardens, he would tie Christians to a stake. He would douse them with, with flammable material and set them on fire so they could tour the gardens in the evening by light. He is the one who was in a major building campaign and wanted his working crews to be able to work at night. So he set up a stretch of crucifixion crosses for miles and would crucify the Christians in the late evenings and douse them with flammable material while they were still on the cross and light them on fire so his men could work by light in the evening. Mm -hmm. 
That's who this was. He hated Christians. And guess where Paul wanted to go? <laughs> Paul wanted to go to Caesar. Why? He wanted to go to Caesar because of Acts chapter 9 and verse 15. The prophetic word of the Lord that he would take the gospel to the Gentiles even to Caesar. The Lord may take you some places this year that you don't necessarily want to go. Mm -hmm. But you've got to go in the power of the Lord and say what God tells you to say. Amen. How many received that in the Lord? Amen. 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 So when Paul said, I want to appeal to Caesar, it's like he was appealing to the Supreme Court of the United States. I mean, he was going to have to go to Washington in order to make that happen. And he was going to have to get there by boat. Now, I want to put something out there. In this upcoming year, you need to be careful what boats you get into. Mm -hmm. Just ask Jonah. <laughs> At the same time, you better be careful who you let in your boat. Yes. Just ask the people that were on the boat mm -hmm. with Jonah. Mm -hmm. The Lord says this is a year where we need to discern greatly. Not everything that glitters is gold. Amen. Do you receive that in the Lord? Yes. So number one, we need to keep in mind for this upcoming year that we've got to be careful when we get into the boat. Is this the boat that God wants me to get into? And I find it interesting that from the moment they get into the boat, the trouble seems to happen. Because when Paul makes the request to appeal to Caesar, he makes the request during the winter, not the summer. And the winter in the area that he was going to launch from was when they had the worst storms of the entire year. It was in the winter. Isn't that interesting? The time when he requests to go and see Caesar. We also want to keep in mind when they get in the boat, Paul knew where he was supposed to go. How many know it was the will of the Lord that he go to Rome? Because God was going to use him in Rome. Can I hear an amen? amen? Hallelujah. But he gets in the boat. And as he gets in the boat and they lift up anchor and they take off, the word says the winds blew contrary to the direction that they were supposed to go. When you get into the boat this year, don't be surprised as you are moving towards the things that God has for you, if it doesn't feel like the winds and the waves are pushing in the opposite direction. How many know that doesn't mean you're going in the wrong direction? Even when the, the winds and the waves seem to be pushing against you, there's going to be resistance. We are going to encounter resistance to what God has for us. How many receive that? If it's of the Lord, there's going to be resistance. But don't be discouraged. Don't be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Yes. Amen. 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 Even when things seem to be pressing against you and the situation was so desperate because as the storm comes up, one of the main points of navigation that the crew on that ship would have used would have been the North Star. The North Star was used by the sailors in those days in order to navigate. But how many know in the midst of the winds and the storms and the Northeaster, they couldn't even see the North Star. And they don't even know where they're at or how to get to where they need to get to. But how many know Paul was walking, was held by, was covered by a prophetic word? So the winds are blowing contrary. The waves are going contrary. They're trying to push to their destination. They realize that the boat is too heavy to get to where God wants them to go. So what do they have to do? They have to start throwing some things overboard. <laughs> the Lord says in the season he's calling you into, there's some things on the ship that need to be thrown overboard. Mm-hmm. You've heard me say this before. God was bringing me one year into a new season. And right in the middle of praise and worship, I saw the doorway. It was absolutely beautiful. And God said, go through the doorway. And I went to go through the doorway, but I kept bumping on the threshold. And I couldn't get through the door. And I was getting frustrated and saying, God, you said, go through the door. And the Lord said, Andrew, look in your arms. 
And my arms were full of all kinds of things from the previous season. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, you can't go through the door in this new season holding these things. Mm -hmm. right. Let them go. Mm -hmm. And there's some things this year that God's going to say to you, let it go. Mm -hmm. For some of us, it's the past. Mm -hmm. And the Lord is saying, let it go. For some of us, it's our failures. God's saying, let it go. For some of us, it's self-condemnation. God's saying, let it go. For some of us, it's people in our lives mm -hmm. that are pressing opposite to where God is calling us to go. Yeah. And the Lord may say, let him go. Does anybody receive that in the Lord? Amen. What's in your arms right now? Because we're entering a new season. What's in your arms right now? What's in the boat that God is saying, throw overboard? I found it fascinating in opening prayer that Mother Love is talking about being without her phone less than 24 hours. <laughs> and she wakes up in the morning, I'm cut off. I'm cut off. Would you just be honest, being honest with us? I'm cut off. My communication and all of this is cut off. Anybody remember a few decades ago? <laughs> Where we had something called an answering machine. And if you were out and somebody called, they had to leave a message. And then you got back to them whenever you got home and, and got that message. And you were able to call back. Is anybody hearing this? Yes. But now we're so used to instant communication, instant gratification, instant connection, instant news. If the Lord released a holy blast in this room right now that put everybody's cell phones out of commission for the next 24 hours, would we be lost? Let's be honest, I think most of us would. The Lord wants to bring us to a point where the only thing that would cause us to be completely lost would be if we lost Him. Whatever that thing is, that if it was taken out of your life for 24 hours that would make you feel completely lost, that's not Jesus, mm -hmm. the Lord may ask you to throw it overboard this yes. year. Yes. Yes. These are some not so easy words God's given me. And by the way, he's not just speaking this to me, he's, to you, he's speaking this to me, he's speaking this to my wife, he's speaking this to all of us. God is saying, I want you to get rid of unnecessary things this year. Amen. Do not be surprised if the Spirit of God doesn't say to you, simplify. Mm -hmm. Ooh, simplify. Simplify. Because some of us have so much stuff that we don't really have the stuff. The stuff has us. And God is saying, I want you to throw it overboard. But Lord, but Lord, but Lord. Very interesting, John and I were taking a walk through the forest preserve here this last week, spending time together and with the Lord, just enjoying the Lord's company and each other's company. And the Lord said, you know what the toughest words are that God's ever going to say to you? Give it away. The Lord may say to you for some things in this year, give it away. But you know what's interesting is they're throwing things overboard and they're still trying to press forward to get to the destination. Then they run aground on a sandbar. And the interesting thing about a sandbar is, another thing I saw in the Mississippi, an interesting thing about a sandbar is if you ran your boat into a sandbar, you were stuck. You were stuck. Once you're on a sandbar, you can't get to where you want to get to. You are stuck. There's going to be some times this year where you feel like you hit a sandbar. The Lord says when that happens, fall on your knees and listen. Because God's going to move things out of your life this year that you've been crying for him to remove for years. Mountains are going to move. Strongholds are going to fall. Things in your way are going to get pushed out of the way this year. Do you believe it? Yes. You know, the, the thing as a kid who had a lot of experience on the Mississippi when I was growing up, I understood this. Sandbars were interesting. They were a double-edged sword. Because they would appear through the flow of the river and a sandbar could just kind of show up out of nowhere. You, you didn't always know where they were going to be. But they would appear like good and solid ground. That was a double-edged sword. If you ran into them with a boat, you could get stuck. 
But we also knew as kids, never go to a sandbar and anchor your boat and go out on that sandbar and hang out and swim because as quickly as the sandbar was developed by the river, the water can swirl and it disappears just that quickly mm -hmm. and can pull you down into it when that happens. The Lord says some of us have been have come into this year stuck on a sandbar. God says as easy as you got stuck on it and you felt held by it, I can remove it that quickly. Does anybody receive that in the Lord? Yeah. So if you felt like you came into this year stuck on a sandbar, trust the Lord. Can I hear an amen? amen. amen. Now it's very interesting that as Paul is in the ship, one thing after another after another happens. If it's not the winds, if, it, if it's not the waves, if it's not the sandbars, if it's not throwing things overboard, not working, it's going to be just more things after more things trying to hinder, trying to hinder, trying to hinder, to the point that right in the middle of everything, the entire ship that they're on breaks apart. This year, if you are on a ship that breaks apart, trust the Lord. Because sometimes we're on the wrong ship and God breaks it apart to move us into a new place. Sometimes that place is inside of us. Sometimes that place is outside of us. Does anybody hear what the Lord is saying? Yes. All right. So they're trying to get to their destination. The winds are now pressing them inland. They hit a sandbar and the entire ship breaks into pieces. When that happens, they've got to grab a floating piece of the broken ship and try to get to shore. Anybody ever been there before? <laughs> you were right in the midst of something that you thought was going to be so amazing in the Lord. And all of a sudden, it just seemed to fall apart. Maybe it's something in your personal life, some area of your, some aspect of your life and now you find yourself floating on one of the broken pieces trying to get to a place of safety. How many know whether you're in the boat, you're in the storm, or you're feverishly trying to paddle to shore on a piece of the broken boat, our God is still God. Amen. How many receive that in the Lord? Amen. And as some things break apart this year that you thought wouldn't, grab a piece of the broken ship and start paddling to shore because God's plan for your life isn't done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and by the way, some of us have put more faith in the ship that we're in mm -hmm. than the God of the ship. Ooh. And so God breaks it apart and says, I'll let you take a splintered piece and paddle on it to try to get to safety. Come on. Some of you are at the edge of this season. Some of you are entering this season. Some of you are right in the middle of the season. Mm -hmm. This test can only last as long as God allows it to. Surrender to Him in the process. Amen. And learn everything that you can. Amen. Can I hear an amen? amen? You know, it's interesting that Paul paddles to shore. They get to shore. They're wet. They're cold. They're miserable. Somebody starts a fire and the fire is beginning to blaze. And all of a sudden, Paul thinks, oh, finally, I'm out of the storm. I'm off the ship. I'm not paddling any longer. The fire is getting warm and it's feeling really good. All of a sudden, out of the heat of the fire comes a snake, an adder, and the thing grabs a hold of him and bites him. The fire on the shore was not the destination and Paul was getting kind of comfortable there. So the Lord said, okay, I've got to move you on. All of a sudden, the snake comes out of the fire. It doesn't come out of the fire and bite anybody else but Paul. Mm -hmm. It comes right at him and bites the man of destiny sitting around the fire. Mm -hmm. And how many know that the snake that bit him was poisonous and anybody who was familiar with that snake knew Paul was done at that very point. Mm -hmm. wow. In Missouri, we'd say he went from the frying pan into the fire. Wow. <laughs> Literally is what just happened to him. I mean, one thing after another, now he's finally getting warm and okay, it's about to get better. And here comes a snake. Don't give up. But you know what Paul doesn't do? 
that snake bites him and grabs a hold of it. He lifts it up and everybody sees it and gasps. Paul doesn't do this. Well, I guess it's over now. I guess this is finally it. I guess I'm not going to make it to Rome. I guess that was just a pipe dream. I guess it wasn't of the Lord. Paul didn't do that. What did Paul do? He violently shook that thing off and it went into the fire and it died. Shake the snakes off this year. When you get bitten by the snake and that thing tries to hold on to you, shake it off in the fire of the Lord. Amen. For he's an all-consuming fire. Do you receive that in the Lord? Amen. 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 God's destiny was God's destiny on Paul's life, even when a poisonous snake was biting him. Because even that poisonous snake was not going to hold him back from the destiny of God on his life. Mm -hmm. Does anybody receive that in the Lord? Amen. Why? He was a man of destiny. You're a person of destiny. Don't give up. But you know what happened when he shook the snake off? Then the accusations came. You know what? That man escaped the Northeaster. That man escaped the ship breaking into pieces. That man got on the shore where he should have been safe. Now he gets bit by a poisonous snake. He's really a criminal. He's a murderer. Yes. <laughs> Yes, he was. Mm -hmm. yeah. but the, And they were speaking the truth. But they weren't speaking the truth of who Paul was as he was around the fire. Mm -hmm. They were speaking the truth of who he had been. Yes. Mm -hmm. See, sometimes you're going through that storm and, and you think it's finally over and it's finally over and I'm going to come out on the other side of this thing. And now folks start talking about you. Now folks start saying things about you. I just got by the fire and it's starting to get warm and now I'm bit by a snake and now the people around me are turning on me. Accusation has come. Shake it off. Amen. You are who God says you are. Mm -hmm. And do not be surprised this year as you step into your destiny if the mouths don't start, start moving. <laughs> Oh, really? You hear sister so-and-so stepping into her ministry? Oh, really? She's stepping into her ministry? She's just blah, 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 blah. You know what those are? Those are curses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You stand against those curses through the blood of Jesus. Amen. And in this house, as people are stepping into their ministry, we're going to lift their hands up. Yes. And we're going to stand with them and encourage them as we see them walk in their destiny. Yes. Yes. Does anybody receive that in the Lord? Amen. Because this is a house where people are going to be raised up in their ministries. Mm -hmm. And they're going to walk in their ministries in this house. God's using this as a training ground. But as they walk in their ministries and God blesses their ministry to flourish in this house, then God may call them into another season outside of this house. Mm -hmm. How do we respond? Oh, this house, we've loved on him. we poured all kinds of time and ministry effort into him. We've helped raise him up. And now he wants to go? Mm -hmm. You know what? When God's calling them into their new season, we're going to bless them yes. into the new season because God is establishing kingdom relationships. Yes. And those ministries are going to work together for the kingdom yes. in the time that remains. Mm -hmm. Amen. And as a shepherd in this house, I understand with you, investment isn't ownership. You belong to Jesus. You're being raised up for the bridegroom and your ministry for his kingdom. Yes. Right. Now, I'm excited it's going to grow and flourish here, but come on now. It's not only in this house. Mm -hmm. God's going to use that ministry for the kingdom. I want to see apostles raised up here, pastors raised up here, prophets raised up here, teachers raised up here, evangelists raised up in this house, revivalists raised up in this house. Are they going to function in this house? Yes, but God's going to call others to go and start ministries. Apostles create something in the Lord that can be reproduced. And some of the greatest blessing for me will be to see people raised up in this house in their ministries and then go birth other ministries. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm relational. It can be hard to let go, but my papa's heart in the Lord says, yes! Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. 
Hallelujah. Praise God. God's good. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now, I want you to understand something. So many times I've noticed with the people of God, when the Northeaster comes, when difficult things begin to happen, they begin to develop an attitude like this. You know, I'm getting what I deserve. I messed up. I blew it. I did this. I'm not enough of this. I'm not enough of that. How many know that that's not the voice of the Lord? And I want you to know when storms come up this year, the trouble you're going through isn't about your past. It's about where God's about to take you. See, the enemy always wants you to focus back here. Because what's back here will never help you get to what he has that's up here. This will only keep you stuck. There's a sandbar behind you. Do not step back into it or the waters will swirl and you'll get sucked down into it and you're done. The Lord says your future is not in your past. So the Lord is saying, let's keep our eyes focused forward this year. What you're going through isn't because necessarily you've done something wrong. It's about where God is going to take you. Even when the attack comes through people. Mm -hmm. Anybody receive that in the Lord? Yeah. Yes. Now I want to show you something. Let's go to Philippians chapter 4 and verse 22. <laughs> because even though Paul's on a ship and the ship breaks apart and he has to paddle to shore... And then he gets bitten by a snake. And then everybody thinks he's going to die. And you know what happens after they think he's going to die? He doesn't die. And then they, they declare he's a god. <laughs> Paul's got to be going, this is getting ridiculous. You may be in storms like this this year. Don't take your eyes off of Jesus. Because on that island, God births a revival through Paul. Mm -hmm. And then when the winter's over, another ship is going to come that's going to take him to Rome. Mm -hmm. Let me say this in the Lord, no cliche intended, your ship is going to come in. Yes. <laughs> and God's going to get you where he wants to take you. Can I hear an amen? Amen. amen. See, the enemy knew... Paul wanting to go to Caesar was a problem. Because now he was going to take the gospel before, before the very throne of the enemy's peace de la resistance. He was going to take the gospel right before Nero. So the enemy says, okay, we're going to bring a northeaster going here. Okay, we're going to break this thing apart. I'm going to do everything I can do to try to keep Paul away from Rome. See, Rome was the destination, not the problem. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> do not give up on the call of destiny on your life. Mm -hmm. Can I hear an amen? Amen. How powerful was it going to be? Well, can I be real graphic about Nero for just a quick moment? Mm -hmm. At a point in Nero's reign, <clears throat> Nero does something that was completely baffling even to his own leadership team. He executes his wife and he marries a boy that looks just like his wife. This is history. You can study this. He was flagrantly homosexual, bisexual, anything that could go on. Nero was involved in it. And this happens and nobody seemed to understand why. I think the why of this is hidden in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 22, I want you to see what the word says as he's giving his final greeting to the Philippians. All the saints send you greetings, especially those who belong to Caesar's household. Whose household? Caesar's household. Jewish rabbis have taught, interestingly enough, that under Paul's ministry in Rome, once he finally got there, Nero's wife got saved. And there was a Bible study that went on secretly in Nero's own palace. 
And rabbis have taught through the rabbinical teaching over the years that Nero find out, found out, and that's why he had his wife slain. Mm -hmm. yep. So what does God do through Paul? Brings revival to Nero's own households. Mm -hmm. Don't you think the enemy was a little angry about that? Mm -hmm. Let me ask that again. Don't you think the enemy was a little angry about that? Yes. I want you to see something. Romans chapter 16 and verse 20. Romans chapter 16 and verse 20. If you stay in the destiny that God has for your life, amazing things are going to begin to happen. Can I hear an amen? amen? And you know what Paul realized in the midst of shipwreck and storm and snake bite and people turning against him and ministering before an evil emperor and all of this. Notice what he says in Romans 16 verse 20. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. Amen. 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 So in the midst of the storms that you're in in 2022, I want you to keep Romans 16, 20 in front of you. The God of peace who gives you peace even in the midst of the storm will crush Satan under your feet. He doesn't say might crush, could crush. If you do everything right, will crush. No, the word says the God of peace, the God of shalom, the God of nothing missing, nothing broken, even in the storm, will cross Satan under your feet. Amen. Do you receive that in the Lord? Yes. Keep that in front of you in the midst of the storm. Do you know the storm came up because of where Paul was going? Let me ask you a question. Where are you going in 2022? Mm-hmm. You're going somewhere. Amen. Where are you going? You're going to great places in the Lord. You're going to new dimensions in the Lord. Yeah. You're going to new places in Him where He's going to tear down strongholds. You're going to go into places where who you truly are in the spirit realm is going to begin to manifest yeah. through you in the natural. Yeah. Let me tell you where you're going. You're going somewhere in the Lord. Yeah. And it's going to be mighty in Jesus' name. Can I hear an amen? amen? Now let's shift away from Paul and, and I want to begin to just release a couple things to you that God is saying very specifically about 2022. Mm -hmm. Because the bridegroom never desires to keep anything a secret from his bride. Do you receive that in the Lord? Yes, All right. So we've got to understand in the Lord, the Hebrew year always runs parallel to our year and our Gregorian calendar. We've got to understand that, okay? So our calendar is a solar-based, a sun-based calendar, and the Hebrew calendar is a lunar-based calendar, a moon-based calendar. So the years are not going to quite add up the way that we look at the years, and the way the Jewish calendar is even set up, they have a, a, a leap year of catching up, so to speak, periodically, which kind of moves the feast in the different places in the years, right? And that's why they ultimately, ultimately have these catch-up times in their calendar so the fall feasts don't start ending up in the spring feast and the spring feast and the fall feast to try to keep this calendar in alignment. Mm -hmm. So we've just come into the year 2022 in our calendar the Hebrew year is the year 5782. Now, the Hebrew year 5782, the Jewish nation came into that year during uh, right around September 6th during Rosh Hashanah. Now, I want us to understand, spiritually, we entered with Israel into 5782, September 6th. Because we're grafted into the vine. Can I hear an amen? amen? We've got to understand that. But there's also very specific anointing, door opening, and power being released over God's people in the year 2022. Does everybody understand that? All right. So we want to understand a few things about this year that God wants to do. This is the year that the voice of the Lord is going to begin being heard in the house of God more loudly than ever before. See, we've got to understand this entire decade that we're in, the decade of the 20s, 
As we were crossing over from 2019 into 2020, the Lord said, this is the roaring 20s that we're coming into. Now, if you study the 1920s that they called originally the Roaring Twenties, it was a great time of change, a great time of shifting, a great time of celebration and joy, mm -hmm. interestingly enough. Mm -hmm. It was a fascinating time as far as the world was concerned. Mm -hmm. We're going to see the spiritual aspect of that in this decade, and we are seeing it. It's interesting, this entire decade in the Hebrew is the decade of pay. And it's the decade that in the Hebrew symbolizes the mouth. Yes. And it's the year for God's people to decree and declare what is being spoken from the throne of God. This is a very prophetic decade. Can I hear an amen? amen. So what did the enemy try to do at the beginning of this decade? Put masks over the mouths of God's people so they could not declare and decree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay? And I'm going to say this in love and know my heart as I say it. The COVID masks are not just for protection against the virus, but they were to put a muzzle on the mouth of God's people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I want you to notice as COVID came and the masks went on, how people lost a sense of politeness, mm -hmm. of hospitality, mm -hmm. of love. Of trust. Isn't that interesting? Yes. Very interesting how that mask brought a shifting. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that. It's very interesting if you study 5781 in the Hebrew calendar, it was the year of hearing the voice of the Father. 5782 is the year of hearing the voice of the Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. Interestingly enough, and how is the Lord right now manifesting from the throne at this point in history? He's the soon and coming king. So you're going to hear the voice of Jesus as the king. Do not expect to hear his voice as the gentle lamb. He has shifted in the timing of the father and is now speaking as the king. Do you receive that in the Lord? Amen. All right, so this is the year that the voice of God is going to be heard afresh and anew in the house of God. Amen. That's why this year, God is birthing a prophetic council in this house. Mm -hmm. Sister Jean is going to head up the prophetic council. Woo! God is putting together who he wants on that council. Everybody out in this house is prophetic because we can all hear the voice of God. But God is putting together a small prophetic council that's going to come together to press in in intercession and really hear the voice of God and release those words over this body. The Lord said, it's time. Can I hear an amen? amen. The Lord also says, this is the year that things that God has spoken over your life in previous seasons are going to be birthed. There's that birthing word from New Year's Eve. The Lord said, this is the year where God is the, the, the mm. this is the year where the things that God has spoken in previous years are going to be birthed. Mm -hmm. That means many of us have been sitting on prophetic words that we've been waiting to come into fulfill, to fulfillment or into fruition. And many of us have gone, God, when, God, when, God, when. We're like those that have been martyred that are before the throne of God that are saying, Lord, when? That's what we've been like before the Lord. When God, when God, when God. And the Lord's quietly been saying, I'm not slow in keeping my promises. See, as you come in the season, the birthings are beginning to happen. And there are even some things that God spoke over you in previous seasons that maybe you got a little bit angry with them over because they haven't happened. Maybe you've gotten a little frustrated with him because they haven't happened. Maybe you've given up on those things because they haven't happened. God says now is the season when they're going to begin to happen. Okay, I think I'm a whole lot more excited about this than you are. Amen. God says they're going to happen. I'm not slow and keep up my promises. I'm not a man that I should lie. What I said will be, will be. See, there's going to be some things that if we're not careful that God is going to birth through us that we're going to look at it and go, God, what's that? Mm 
Okay? Mm -hmm. And God's going to go, that's that thing I promised to you when you were okay. such and such an age and you were in a service and somebody spoke that prophetic word. You gave up on it. You let it go. You thought it died. And I'm breathing life into the Lazarus prophetic words in your life. Okay, I think I'm way more excited. Than this. <laughs> now, I love this. And, and by the way, the Lord was speaking this before Scott spoke this word. So you know this is in alignment with what God's saying. The Lord said, this is the year to make a space for new birthing. Mm -hmm. He said, make a space for new birthing. Things are going to be birthed, but not only that, God says, make room for them. So a couple that's going to have a baby, before the baby comes, they select a baby room. Mm -hmm. They paint the room. They get the items in the room that need to be there. They make sure there's no hazards in this room. Because the last thing they want to do is be in the travail and the delivery and one look at the other and go, oh no, we don't have a room ready for this. Amen. Mm -hmm. The Lord is saying that the birthing is coming. Make preparation for the space. This is the year that God is going to increase your sphere of influence. Get ready and make way. That may mean there's some things in your rooms that need to be taken out of them because God wants those rooms for something else. Maybe there's woundedness in those rooms. Maybe there's strongholds in those rooms. Maybe there's a room in your house that's full of stuff. It's your junk room. And God in the natural is going to say, clear it out and make it a prayer room. Make it a secret place. Mm -hmm. Is anybody hearing what the Lord's saying? Yeah. The Lord is saying, make room for the birthing. Make room for the birthing. The woman pregnant in the natural realm has a series or sets of clothes that she's going to wear. And as she gets closer to the time to deliver, those clothes are changing. She has pregnancy clothes. I see people in pregnancy clothes right now. Prepare the space for the birthing. Because the baby's coming. Come on. I'm more excited than you guys are about that. All right. Now, this is interesting that 22 or the 22nd letter in the Hebrew alphabet is Tav. T-A-V is the final letter of the Hebrew alphabet. 2022 is the year where God is going to bring things in your life into completion and birth new things in your life. So don't be surprised if some things come to an end and new things begin. There's some good works in you that he's going to see through to completion and there's some brand new things that God is going to begin to do. God's also going to take some things in the natural that you've only seen one way to use them and God's going to give you revelation of a whole other way that he's going to have you use that thing that you've already had. The Lord said it's a year where the Lord's going to ask you, what do you have? And even if the answer is a little bit of oil, mm -hmm. yeah. do exactly what he tells you to yeah. with it. Because you're going to see a multiplication come. God's going to take things that you thought were dry and dusty. He's going to breathe on them and blow the dust off and bring them to life and multiply them. It's the year of the little boy with the five loaves and the two fish. Well, Lord, even if we had a year's wages, we couldn't feed all these people. What does Jesus say? We're in big trouble, fellas! No, he says, what do we have? We've got a little boy with five loaves and two fish. Is he willing to give them? Yes. Great! I can work with that! The Lord says this year, if you're willing to give the little that you've had from previous seasons, watch how God's going to multiply it. Has anybody received that? By the way, he's going to do this in the midst of Northeasters. <laughs> Pastor, how the two connect with each other? He's going to do this in the midst of your storms. John Coyle, right now you're in the midst of a storm. God says, I'm going to bring a birthing in the midst of the storm. Bring it. Amen. Yes, yes. I'm going to tell on Brother John. I love him. I love my brother. I've known him since he was a teenager. Love my brother, but I'm going to tell on him right now. He showed up New Year's Eve. 
He looked like a Mack truck met him on Windsor as he tried to come across the road. I could see in his face he was not in a great place. I took one look at his face and I knew it. And I said to him, brother, don't leave this building until we're done tonight. Holy Spirit told me he's not going to do that. He's going to leave. I said, John, stay in this building. John snuck out. John snuck out and on the way home, the Holy Spirit leveled him. He got home, the Holy Spirit put him flat on the floor and started moving on him like the Holy Spirit had never moved before and pressed him into a place of surrender. We were here dancing and shouting and the Lord John was flattened like a ribbon before the Holy Spirit. And he came out of that room in the glory. See, God's going to do amazing things in the midst, things in the midst of your storms this year. Can I hear an amen? amen? Now, stay with us. This is the year of Tav, T-A-V. It's the year of completion. Tav in the Hebrew, 22, means completion to mark or to sign with. It also means truth. That word Tav is used in Exodus during the Passover where the Lord says, take the blood of the Passover lamb with some hyssop, dip it in the hyssop, and mark the doorpost three times. That's the Hebrew word tab. That means this is the year that God is going to mark his people and he's going to separate the holy from the profane. He's going to separate the Sunday morning players from the intimate worshipers. Mm -hmm. He is going to mark that that's his. Mm -hmm. And when the door was tabbed, the angel of death passed over. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're going to see a dying of ministries this year that look fruitful to man, but are as barren as the fig tree to Jesus. And if they are not marked with the blood, you're going to see ministries implode this year. Mark these words. These are not my words. They're the Lord's words. Remember, this is the year the voice of Jesus is going to be heard in the house. You want to know what the voice of Jesus is saying? Judgment begins with the house of the Lord. You want to be covered in the blood. You want to be covered in the blood. Amen. When they put the door on the, the blood on the doorpost, they went from left to right to middle. What does that look like? Mm -hmm. It was a picture of the cross. <coughs> Cling to the cross this year. Stay in the place of the flow of the blood. Stay close to the hem of the garment of Jesus. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Does anybody receive that in the Lord? Amen. Now, I want you to see something here, and I promise I won't preach all afternoon. Um, Ezekiel chapter 9. This is a foundational word for the folks that are in this room. Can I hear an amen? amen. It's a foundational word for those who are listening in. This is one of the most unique prophetic passages in the Old Testament. How many know they're all unique, but this is really, really unique in the Lord? Can I hear an amen? Amen. Okay. So I'm going to Ezekiel 9. I'm going to start in verse 3. The word says this. Ezekiel 9, 3. Now the glory of God, the God of Israel went up from above the cherubim where it had been and moved to the threshold of the temple. For the houses that are tabbed, that are marked, the glory of the Lord is going to begin moving in those houses. Now it's interesting that the Hebrew people believed that when they went to temple or tabernacle, the moment they got to the door, the Spirit of God, the glory of the Lord, met them and ushered them in. This is the year the glory of the Lord is going to meet you at the threshold. The threshold of this house, the threshold of your secret place, the threshold of your prayer room, the glory of God is moving to the threshold. What's on the threshold? The blood. Amen. The glory of God is going to move on the threshold. How many receive that in the Lord? Amen. Get this prophetically. Get this prophetically. Can I hear an amen? amen? And by the way, don't be offended. I watched the enemy already try to start offending today. Do not be offended. Stay under the blood. 
Amen. 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 Get into a fence, you go out from under the covering. Mm -hmm. Root of bitterness comes in. Don't do that. Don't let it happen. Yeah. Okay? This wow. is the year in love where I may come up to you and, and just nicely say, please don't do that. Mm -hmm. Don't be offended. I'm just trying to make sure we're walking in the order of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And you know me. I'm, I'm loving, gentle, and compassionate. Okay? Mm -hmm. As I do this. But please listen. <laughs> because God is trying to align you. Can I hear an amen? amen? Don't be offended. Don't be offended. God's doing it to me. <laughs> Andrew, don't do that. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And if I love the Lord and I love the sheep, if God tells me to say something to you, I will. But I'm doing love. Amen? amen? We're all learning and growing together. Amen? amen? Now the glory of the God of Israel went up from above the cherubim where it had been and moved to the threshold of the temple. Then the Lord called to a man clothed in linen who had a writing kit, a writing kit, not writing, but writing kit mm -hmm. at his side and said to him, go throughout the city of Jerusalem and put a mark on the foreheads of those who grieve and lament over the detestable things that are done in it. Mm -hmm. See, this is the year where the prayers that you've prayed like dangerous prayer Lord, I want to love what you love and hate what you hate. Has anybody ever prayed that prayer? Yes. God says, I'm going to mark your forehead this year. I'm going to mark your foreheads because you're going to grieve and lament over the detestable things going on in your generation. Why would you mark the forehead? Why not mark the heart? You can't see the heart. You can see the forehead. Amen. But you know, the word says, I was reading in Zechariah this morning in my, my quiet time. And the Lord says, as he begins to move, he said, I will mark the foreheads of those that are mine. And I will put upon their forehead the Lord's. But what's behind my forehead? My brain, my mind. Mm -hmm. See, as he marks your forehead this year, you're going to begin to think as he thinks. Yeah. You're going to begin to feel like he feels. That's where travail is going to come in. Yeah. Don't be surprised if you go through a minute through a neighborhood on your way to work or to the grocery store or being led by the Spirit and all of a sudden the spirit of travail comes over you. All of a sudden grieving and lamenting comes over you to where you have to pull over and start birthing right there. Yes. Um, don't be surprised. Mm -hmm. Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised if you're going through neighborhoods where kids are being abused and the spirit of lament comes over you. Don't be surprised if the Lord says, pull the car over and prophesy over this neighborhood. Don't be surprised if God doesn't burst something through you for that neighborhood. Come on. Come on. This is the year of the great inconvenience. This is the year where God's really going to mess with your schedule. Mm -hmm. A trip to Walmart is going to become full of prophetic evangelistic opportunity. <laughs> oh, it's going to happen. Oh, it's going to happen. You went in for a Dr. Pepper, but you released Dr. Jesus. <laughs> Anybody receive that in the Lord? <laughs> I mean, God's doing it. Now go down to verse 6. The word says, Slaughter old men, young men, maidens, women, and children, but do not touch anyone who has the mark. No, no, no. The mark the Lord was just talking about yes. in the previous verses. It's not the mark of the beast. Go throughout the city of Jerusalem and put a mark on the foreheads of those who grieve and lament over all the detestable things that are done. Mm -hmm. Geo, you want God to mark your forehead. Yes. But what now begins to happen? The Lord begins to send out angels through that city that are going to deal with those who don't have the mark. Mm -hmm. um, who wants to read for me the next four words? Yeah, mm -hmm. Begin 
at my sanctuary. Wait a minute. Hold the presses. We've marked everybody in the house of the Lord with the mark because they grieve and lament, right? There will be people even in the house of the Lord that refuse to grieve and lament mm -hmm. and have Jesus' heart. They're just playing church. Mm -hmm. So when it's time <clears throat> for the death to come, the word in, in my NIV is slaughter. Anybody have any other word in your translation? What verse? Pardon? What verse is it? Uh, verse 6. Ezekiel 9, 6. Slay. Beginning where? Slay. Sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Folks, I can't make this up. This is this is what Holy Spirit is saying. I'm going to begin to slay those without the mark on their forehead. Mm -hmm. Now, does that mean people are going to start dying in the house of God? Mm -hmm. um, I did hear the Lord say a few years back, I'm going to bring back the days of Ananias and Sapphira. Mm -hmm. Folks that are lying to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Don't be, don't be surprised this year. But that's not what I'm getting at. To slay doesn't just mean physical. Mm -hmm. There's a spiritual death. Mm -hmm. This is a strong word. Some of us may want to go back to Paul and the shipwreck at this point. But this is a strong word. Has anybody received this word? Mm -hmm. I'm not making this up. Holy mm -hmm. Ghost is saying it. It's that same word, mark the foreheads for those who grieve and lament. It's tap. It's tap. This is the year of the marking of the Lord. This is the year that God is going to mark those that are His. Marking is not always a pleasant experience. Just ask an animal that's been branded. Well, Pastor, why did you have to put it that way? Well, I mean, let's be honest. God's going to mark us this year. You may be marked in travail. You may be marked in the midst of your birth thing. You're going to be marked. Lord, mark me. Lord, mark me. Can I hear an amen? amen. It's the year of the tab. Can I hear an amen? amen? That's probably the most challenging part of this year about 2022. But it's not for those that are marked. You see, if you're marked, you're marked for something. An animal that's branded, it means that animal is owned by somebody. Mm -hmm. You're being marked because you're owned by the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Don't be marked by the spirit of the age. Don't be marked by the spirit of Jezebel. Don't be marked by complacency. Don't let anything else mark you but Jesus. You only want his mark. Okay? Holly and I are marked. Mm -hmm. You marked, baby girl? Show everybody your mark. <laughs> These rings that we're wearing are symbolic. You see them on the outside. When someone sees them, it lets them know that we're married. Mm -hmm. God is marking the ones on the forehead that are married to him. You want this. Yes. yes. And I want to encourage you to pray, Lord, mark my forehead in 2022. It's been a shifting in the anointing in this house, hasn't there? Mm -hmm. Can you feel mm -hmm. the shifting that's happened in this room? Mm -hmm. God's getting very, very serious. Mm -hmm. Okay? This is a prophetic release for you. Amen? Mm -hmm. Now, this is really neat along with the marking, and I want you to grab a hold of this, take the word on the mark, and then dip your toes into this word, and then dive in. It's very interesting that Tab is the 22nd letter and final letter of the Hebrew alphabet. That's why God is saying, I'm going to bring some things to an end this year in your life that have hindered you, caused you to stumble, gotten in your way. Anybody excited? Yeah. And I'm going to birth new things. But this is also interesting. I love the Hebrew language because it's, it's, it's three-dimensional, at least. Fourth, if we talk about the dimension of the third heaven. But it's a multi-dimensional language. Um, every letter has a sound attached to it, a numeric value attached to it, a prophetic meaning attached to it. Hebrew is a living language. I believe it's the language of heaven. I, I, I really, really do. The letter Tav, 22nd letter in the Hebrew alphabet, 
Its numerical significance is the number 400. It's the number 400. Egypt spent 400 years in captivity, or Israel spent 400 years in captivity in Egypt, and then deliverance! Amen. Amen. Which means what? There's some things in your life that you've been held captive to that the Lord is now saying, I'm marking you with my blood and it's time for you to pass over. It's time for you to pass over these things that have held you back. I'm bringing you out of Egypt. I'm bringing you out of bondage. I'm bringing you out of slavery. I'm bringing you out of mindsets. Your 400 years are over. Yes. Anybody been going through anything that's felt like you've been in it 400 years? Yes. Amen, sister? Okay. Amen? Sister Shanta, shaking her head. Like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Come on now. This means this is your year of healing and deliverance. It's your year for completion. Anybody remember the word that the Lord spoke Friday night about the fact that a curse comes on individuals or nations or families that oppress the weak and take advantage mm -hmm. of the downtrodden? Yes. And we talked about the fact in the United States of America, the Native Americans cursed the White House because we broke every major treaty we ever made with the Native American people. And then from 1860 on, every president elected in the 20th year dies in office. That's a curse. Mm -hmm. They said the only reason why Reagan didn't die when he was shot in 1980 was a group of intercessors the week before were led by the Holy Spirit to travail and fast and pray over him. He still got shot, but the bullet came within an inch of his heart and stopped. Mm -hmm. How many receive that in the Lord? Amen. How many know that's a we, we got to pray for our nation? Yes. But you want to hear an encouraging word? <coughs> Tav means 400. 400 years that Israel spent in Egypt and in deliverance. The pilgrims landed at Plymouth Rock 400 years ago. Mm -hmm. You know what I believe that means? We're about to see revival in our nation. Amen. And you know what they did when they landed at Plymouth Rock? They jumped out of the boat, they took sticks and made a crude cross, pounded into the ground and dedicated the land to Jesus. I believe that was prophetic and symbolic and that's coming back. Can I hear an amen? amen. 2022 will begin the marking of truth beginning with the house of God. 2022 is a Shemitah year. You should start getting excited. It's a Shemitah year. The year of Shemitah was the seventh year. Now stay with me on this, please. It's a Shemitah year, a Sabbath year of rest. And to Israel, the Shemitah marked the end of something and the beginning of something else. Has anybody received that? Yes. Now remember that word about deliverance, 400 mm -hmm. and deliverance? Mm -hmm. The Shemitah is a year to let go or a year to be released. So this is a Shemitah year. In the Shemitah year, they let the ground rest. So we've got to understand they came into the promised land, they conquered, and God set up the Shemitah principle. And that was the Lord said, you plant and you labor for six years, based upon the creation, Genesis chapter 1, then you let the year go fallow, the ground go fallow for the next year. It's a Shemitah year. What was the purpose of that? Well, it let the land recover, right? Nutrients, minerals, etc. But also, if you're a farmer, what do you do during the Shemitah year? And by the way, the Lord said, if you follow that principle, my Shemitah principle, you'll harvest so much at the end of the sixth year, it will carry you into the seventh year and into the eighth year of planting. Mm -hmm. yes. It's in the Word. It's in the Torah. What does a farmer do during a Shemitah year? Plants. Rest. Rest. It was a year of Sabbath. It was a year of focusing on the Lord. It was a year of going to all the feasts in Jerusalem, not just the three required annually. It was a Sabbath year. 
This is a Shemitah year. It's a year where God's going to meet you in the secret place. It's a year where we're going to see the power of God explode in our services. We came in this morning, power of God was moving, praise, worship, power of God moved, and then the enemy brought a nor'easter. God's brought us back through that nor'easter. The anointing now is moving again in the room. He's teaching us. I'm not going to look at this and go, and instead of in the room, you know, all the microphones, like, gave feedback, and all this stuff happened today. No, we're pressing through. Mm -hmm. I'm angry mm -hmm. at what the enemy tried to do. Mm -hmm. But I'm excited we've pushed through. Yes, hallelujah. Amen. hallelujah. Amen. So it's, it's, it's a Shemitah year. It's very interesting when we start looking at it. You could call this the year of Jubilee mm -hmm. in the Lord. When the Lord walked into the temple and read Isaiah 61, he was reading the reading for, of that Sabbath for the year. There was a Sabbath reading every Sabbath for the entire year. He opens up the, the scroll, Isaiah. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me to preach the good news of the gospel to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to set the captives free, to set at liberty those who sit in darkness, mm -hmm. to give them beauty for ashes and joy for mourning and a garment of praise in the place of the spirit of despair. Mm -hmm. That was a jubilee reading. Jesus was saying, I am jubilee. Mm -hmm. Jesus is saying in 2022, I am Jubilee. Mm -hmm. Come to me and find rest. You are burdened and heavy laden. Mm -hmm. Is anybody receiving that in the Lord? Yeah. Amen. The Lord says this, and I love this. It's right in alignment with everything he's been speaking today. 2022 is a time to let go in order to move forward. It's very interesting. The Shemitah year was a year of restoration of anything that had been lost or stolen. It was a release from every obstacle that held people back. It was a year debts were forgiven. Oh. Folks, this is a Shemitah year. When you go before the Lord in your prayer times, we are in a season where God is going to pay debts off. Supernaturally. Now don't forget to give him the glory, honor, and praise. Amen. All right? Amen. And and make sure that you honor him with your wealth. Yes. Amen. Yeah. But it's a year where God wants to pay debts off. Mm -hmm. I'm just being honest. And for some of you, it's going to be to position you for ministry. Mm -hmm. Don't shift into the prosperity message and think I'm going to throw my tie on and start telling you, you know, you give God 20 and He'll give you a hundred. I will not preach that stuff. Mm -hmm. But what I'll preach is when you're faithful and you honor God with the tithe, mm -hmm. Malachi 3, yes. see if he doesn't open up the floodgates of heaven and bless you. So with so much you can't contain it, your crops will, will your pests will not devour your crops. Mm -hmm. Your vine won't cast its fruit. Everybody will see that you're blessed. Deuteronomy 28, you'll lend to many but borrow from no one. The enemy will come against you one way. He'll flee seven different ways. Mm -hmm. Come on now, you'll be blessed yeah. in the city, blessed in the country. Country, head and not the tail, but that's when you honor God with your wealth, not when wealth is your God. Amen. Amen. Are we preaching today? Amen. Okay. Yes. It's going to be a year of abundance, a year of joy, and so much more in the Lord. Now, if that didn't excite you, there's one more thing I want to add. <laughs> Paul said we're grafted into the vine, the blessing of Israel. The blessing of the Jews is ours. Mm -hmm. As Gentile believers, God wants us to pay attention to the Hebrew calendar. I'm convinced there are services that are off the charts that we have in the Gentile church. Those Sundays where you go, man, if you missed it, you missed that service. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. And if we look at the Hebrew calendar, it corresponds with a feast. Mm -hmm. yeah. God still moves according to his feasting calendar. He's our Jewish king. We cannot forget this. Amen? Amen? Okay, we want to keep this in mind. So anything for this year 5782 in the Hebrew is ours. Amen? Amen? As well as what God is speaking over the year 2022 in the Gregorian calendar. We've got to understand that. Mm -hmm. In the Hebrew calendar, 2022 is not just a Smita year. It's a double Adar year. It's the leap year in the Jewish calendar. 
It's a double ADAR year. What goes on in the double ADAR year? I'm glad you asked that. Uh, let's go to Isaiah 61. I can feel it in your spirit. You're like, what? What? Now, by the way, there are two chapters that God has had me praying very consistently for Holly and I in this body. Psalm 91 is one of them. Isaiah 61 is the other. Now, I've already mentioned Isaiah 61 is a jubilee word. Amen? The year of the Lord's favor, that's the year of jubilee. That's the Shemitah year. Amen? So the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because he's anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom to the captives, mm. and, and release from darkness for the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of the vengeance of our God. That's what 2022 is going to be, church. Can I hear an amen? amen? To comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes. God's talking to you right now. Amen. Can I hear an amen? amen. God says, I'm going to give you a crown of beauty instead of ashes. God says, I'm going to give you the oil of gladness instead of your mourning. The Lord says, I am going to give you a garment of praise instead of the spirit of despair, depression, oppression, fill in the blank. Notice what you're going to become. And you will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen? And what are we going to do? We're going to rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. We're going to be like Elijah rebuilding the altar on the top of Mount Caramel mm -hmm. so the fire can come down once again. Elijah, like a spiritual father, pulled everybody together. They cleaned off the stones and he said, our God is the God who's returning the hearts of his people back to him. They will rebuild the ancient ruins. They'll restore the places long devastated. You will be a repairer of broken walls. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. That's us this year, folks. Mm -hmm. Aliens will shepherd your flocks. Foreigners will work your fields. You will be called priests of the Lord. You will be named ministers of our God. And you will feed on the wealth of the nations and then their riches you will boast. Yes. Now, all of that is for us and awesome. I want you to notice the Shemitah verse. The double Adar verse. Isaiah 61, 7. Instead of shame, you will receive a double portion. This is a double yes. portion Adar Shemitah yes. year. Instead of shame, you will receive a double portion. Instead of disgrace, you will rejoice in your inheritance. And so you will inherit a double portion in the land, and everlasting joy will be yours. Hallelujah. Okay, now wait a minute. Brother Odie is taking notes all of a sudden. The Spirit of God's hitting him. I love it. Now, it's amazing what you see from up here. In multiple realms. Hallelujah. I want you to notice something. And so they will inherit a double portion in what land? Their. Our. Your. Land. Now you can look at that and go, woohoo! Property. And God is going to give this house property in 2022. Amen. Hallelujah. But the Lord says, I'm going to give you a double portion of your land. Which means what? If you'll honor God this year, surrender, press into him, he is going to expand your territory mm -hmm. and bring you to a spacious place without restriction. He's going to increase your sphere of influence. Amen. Don't just look at this in terms of possession. Mm -hmm. Look at this in terms of spiritual increase. God is going to increase the portion of the land of this house. He's going to increase our territory and bring us to a spacious place without restriction. And he's going to do that for you personally also. Your ministry will expand and increase. 
Oh, hallelujah. Shiria ba ba ba, horia ba ba shiria, horia ba 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 shiria. Hey, hey, we better get excited in the Lord. I've been watching God speak words from Thanksgiving through the end of 2021 mm -hmm. that back up every single thing that I have just released to you. Yes. And I have had God even release a few words to me to release to others mm -hmm. that are those ex same words exactly mm -hmm. spoken just a little different or through personal application for people in this room. Mm -hmm. I'm amazed. Amen. I'm telling you, church, this is the year of restoration to you of what the enemy has stolen mm -hmm. and the locust and canker worm have eaten. Mm -hmm. But it's a double ADAR year. It's a year of the double portion being restored. Now, I want to challenge you and the Lord to do something. Come before the Lord and speak his language. Lord, I come before you in the courts of the third heaven. And Lord, I decree and declare this is a double ADAR year. Lord, I ask that you would give me a double portion of what's been stolen from me. What the locust and canker worm have eaten. And what people have stolen. Don't ask that one dimensionally. Don't stop there. Mm -hmm. And then say, Lord, I ask you to restore that back to me. And that that was stolen from my ancestors. Mm -hmm. All the way back to Adam and Eve. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Lord, I ask for that now in this generation. Yeah. You want to know what else God told me? Mid-December in my prayer time. I prayed that and the Lord said, okay, what else? And I went, I thought that was really thorough. I, 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 it must not have been. Holy Spirit, please tell me what else. He said, ask me for the things that you were supposed to ask me for in previous seasons that are still sitting in the store vaults of heaven mm -hmm. that I want to release to you now. Mm -hmm. He said, I don't release those to other people. They're still there waiting for you. They're yours. Mm -hmm. And I went, oh. And I prayed that, and then the Holy Spirit said, now what? And I went, okay, I need wisdom, Lord. What, what am I missing? Mm -hmm. He said, now ask for everything your ancestors should have asked for. Mm -hmm. That's waiting. Mm -hmm. And ask for it now. And I'm like, oh, okay, okay. See, I believe that there's things that the enemy has stolen from the family line. Yes. Mm -hmm. That God wants to release in your life now through the double portion. Yeah. But it's going to happen as you walk as an oak of righteousness, mm -hmm. a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. See, you've got to position yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. You see, that oak of righteousness was once a nut that held it in its ground. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. <laughs> that oak of righteousness was once a nut that held its ground. Yes. Mm -hmm. But it went into the ground and it died yes. in surrender. And then God brought up through it mm -hmm. a double portion. Does anybody receive that? Amen. Yes. Hey! God brought forth the double portion. Amen. How many received that in the Lord? Yes. Get ready. Get in alignment. Mm -hmm. How do I get in alignment? Get in a secret place on your face. Get in a prayer carpet on your face and just say, Lord... Any area of my life that's out of alignment with you, with your truth, your word, your spirit, bring it into alignment. Listen, act, do what he says. Mm -hmm. Can I hear an amen? Yeah. Anybody receive this in the Lord? Yes. This is your Isaiah 61 7 year. This is your double eight hour year. This is the year of restoration. This is the year that God is going to give property to this house. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes! And physical. Yes. This is the year where God wants to pay off debts so your ministry can begin to happen. Mm -hmm. This is the year where God's going to free some folks from full-time jobs. Amen. 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 This is the year where God is going to take folks that thought they were retired <laughs> and give them full-time jobs <laughs> in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I just, I feel this coming in the spirit. Mm -hmm. The Lord said to me the other day, Andrew, there's no such thing as retirement in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Okay, God. 
I keep looking back at Scott and Karen. God's bringing them into a ministry like never before, and I'm so excited to see it. Here's the thing. God's spoken some amazing things and some challenging things, hasn't he, for this year? That marking word is challenging. But God wanted us to hear it. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Don't get more excited about the blessing than the blesser. Amen. Yes. Don't get more focused on the word than you do the one who gave the word. Amen. Let's keep it in perspective. Mm -hmm. You're going to receive the double portion because he's the double portion God. Amen. And he loves to bless his children, his sons. We've got to see this for what it is. But don't forget in the midst of everything that God just spoke, the word that God spoke in the book of Romans, we don't want to forget this in the Lord. This is the year the Lord is saying, how many love the Lord? Romans 16, 20, the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. Yeah. This is a year of victory. Yeah. This is a year of overcoming this is a year of power. Can I hear an amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Woo. Are you ready to receive? Yes. Okay. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Just lift your hands up to receive before the Lord, if you will. Just lift your hands up before Him. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, I decree and declare in Your name over this group of people. Lord, over this group of saints that are in this house, and Lord Jesus, that are listening online. Lord Jesus, I decree and declare in your precious name that you are bringing an end in their lives to the torments and the trials and the roadblocks and the things that have held them back in previous seasons. Lord, I decree and declare over them right now, you're breaking every lie of the enemy. You're tearing down every stronghold. Lord, you're uprooting roots of bitterness. Lord, I decree and declare you're marking the foreheads of everyone hearing this word and you're bringing them into the year of double Adar. I decree and declare over you 2022 is the year that the Lord is going to rise up over you with healing in his wings and in his beams. And you're going to leap like calves released from the stall. I declare over you through the blood of Jesus that soul ties, emotional ties, ties to your past are being broken through the blood of Jesus right now. I declare over you right now through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth that God is bringing you into the Shemitah year. It's the year where you will receive a double portion for everything that's been stolen from you. I declare, God is, I declare God's restoring marriages. God is restoring finances. God is restoring health to bodies. God is restoring joy in the name of Jesus. I declare over you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth that the Lord is breaking every word curse, every witchcraft assignment, every negative word spoken against you, even words you've spoken against yourself. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I declare that the Lord is breaking fatherlessness and the orphan spirit off of your heart. I declare that the Lord is replacing rejection with being accepted into the family of God. Amen. Is pulling out the orphan spirit and bringing you into the circle of His love. I decree and declare this is your breakthrough year. And I declare this is the year where the Lord is going to give you a double portion of your land. I declare this is the year where God is going to pay your debts off so that you can serve Him with all your heart in freedom. And I declare that this is a year that this house is going to see the Spirit of God, the glory of God come over the threshold. And people are going to walk into this building and go out the Spirit the moment they come through the door. The year the glory of the Lord is going to be in the sanctuary. And the year of a Shemitah encounter with God every single day in your life. 
I declare this is the year God is moving mountains in your life and tearing down strongholds. I declare the tab anointing of completion is coming over you. That things that God has started in your life, He's completing them. That things that you thought were dead in your life, God is bringing them back to life. I declare this is the year of the favor of the Lord over your life and the day of the vengeance of our God. A year where God is completing things and beginning new things. A year of travail and birthing in your life. And I declare, I declare over you it's the year of the Ezekiel word that God is going to mark your forehead because you grieve and you mourn and you lament as you grieve and mourn over the things going on in your generation and that God is going to preserve you and protect you because your forehead is marked with the blood of Jesus as he begins to bring judgment beginning at the house of God. I declare this is your year of alignment. This is your year of going forward. This is your year of walking as the head and not the tail. This is the year where you will become a mighty oak purposely planted for the display of his splendor. And I bless you now through the blood of Jesus. And I declare now, may the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and turn his countenance towards you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and fill you with shalom peace. Nothing missing, nothing broken in Jesus' name. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I decree and declare over you right now that God is releasing the spirit of deliverance over you. The word of God says that God sings songs of deliverance over you from his throne. And I declare this year, you will hear the songs of deliverance of the Lord pouring out over you. And you will walk in deliverance. I speak a release of deliverance and an anointing of the Lord's blood is divine weaponry to tear down every stronghold in your mind. Just put your hand over your head, your right hand. I just declare over you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth that God is breaking every stronghold in your life. That God is tearing down every thought that exalts itself above the word of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I declare that God is tearing down wrong thought processes and wrong systems of thoughts in your mind right now. And I believe God is releasing deliverance over you. Strongholds fall into the abyss in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And Holy Spirit, I ask that you would release the anointing of mental healing physical healing and emotional healing over this house an anointing of restoration and restitution and reconciliation and reparation lord i declare over this house in 2022 and every year to come lord no matter what northeasters are blowing around us that lord jesus we are going to be safe in your arms covered in your blood and flourishing in the midst of difficult things going on around us. Lord Jesus, I declare that this is the year that we will root deeply below and bear fruit above. That we will flourish like date palms in the courts of our God, bearing fruit continuously even into our old age. And may every part of us be usable. Lord, I pray this now in your precious name. Lord, I cover this house in your blood. I cover everyone in this house in your blood. And Lord Jesus, I bless them now in your precious name. And I just thank you, Lord, for who you are. You are, Lord Jesus, our God, and you're releasing Tav over this house. The anointing of 5782, the anointing of 2022, we receive it now in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, crucified, risen, and seated at the right hand of the Father, the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but by Him. And Father God, the one that you sent, there's no other name under heaven given to men by which they could be saved but the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Woo. Amen.
Now, I want to share this with you. I heard the Holy Spirit say a moment ago, God released things over the people in this room and God released things over those listening online that you don't even realize he released. And the Lord says you're going to be amazed at how those things begin to manifest through the supernatural realm into the natural realm. Does anybody receive that in the Lord? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. God did more in this service than you realize. Yes. Receive it. And things are just going to begin activating in your life. And you're going to be like, whoa, where did that come from? He planted those seeds today. God brought shifting over people's lives in the service today. You're just going to catch up with that shifting. It's coming. So don't be surprised. One more thing the Lord is saying this year. He wants a deeper level of devotion from us. He wants a deeper level of devotion. So I want to encourage you to press deeper. Press deeper. Press deeper. This year. Deeper surrender. Deeper devotion. Deeper intimacy is going to be the key that unlocks the door to a lot of things that the Lord Jesus wants to do. It's going to open up the door for the unhindered, undiluted Jesus to walk into your house, to walk into this house, to walk into your automobile. Come on now. Come on. God's going to do these things. This year, God is going to ask you to get more involved in some things in this house. I may come and ask you, tap you on the shoulder. Hey, I really believe God's leading for you to be involved in this. I want to encourage you to prayerfully consider going through that door because God is going to call you into more this year. The deeper you surrender and say yes, the more God wants to begin to use you. Come on. Well, I really should say the more he can use you yes. as you do that. He already wants to use you in it. You're just getting in alignment. Amen? Amen? I don't want to use anyone's anointing in this room to try to build a ministry. I don't want that. The growth of this house belongs to the one who builds this house. Unless the Lord builds the house, they that build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, they that watch, watch in vain. No, I want to encourage you to step into what God called you to before the foundations of the world were laid. I want to help you live out what he wrote about you in the book about your life for you're ever born. That's what I want to see. Amen? If we do that, the Lord will build this house. This ministry will be what he wants it to be. Obedience, surrender, trust. is going to open up the door for us to walk in holiness, purity, and the fear of the Lord more than ever before, which is going to open up the Shemitah flow that we've been talking about. Step by step, concept upon concept, precept upon precept. That's how this is going to happen. And don't you dare be discouraged this year. I can already feel the enemy trying to bring old discouragement this morning. Uh-uh. No. No. We're not, no, we're not going there. We've come too far mm -hmm. to turn back now. Amen. You wouldn't know how to get back anyway. And if you got there, you wouldn't belong there anymore. Amen. So you keep pressing forward. And I'm telling you this year, that prayer time that you don't feel like going in the secret place and doing, that service you don't really feel, not feeling it to attend, that intercessory meeting that you uh, intercession, I don't know, go. This is the year that we're going to stop walking by what we feel mm -hmm. and start walking according to what we know. Yes. You're going to walk by faith and not by sight. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. 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 Amen? Amen. By the way, I love this prayer show. <laughs> I want to thank my sister that blessed me with this. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm just loving this prayer show. Yes. God's Amen. already used it so much yes. since it's been in this house. What a blessing from the Lord. Amen. Yes, amen. And I'm noticing more prayer shawls are invading the house. <laughs> it's kind of cool. In fact, Gio, 
New Year's Eve had like this full body <laughs> prayer shawl outfit on. Yeah. I've never seen anything like this in my life. Yes. It was absolutely beautiful in yes, the Lord. If you will press into the Lord, you will be amazed this year. Amen. Amen. Does anybody surrender that to the Lord? Amen. Amen. The Lord says you don't need an altar call. You just need to have an altar in your heart mm -hmm. right now and just say, yes, Lord. Does anybody say, yes, Lord? Yes. yes. Lord. You say, yes, Lord. Yes. The Lord said, I'm going to show you that the fishing boat can be used to do more than just catch, catch fish. <laughs> It can be used for evangelism and teaching and miracles. The Lord says, I'm about to show you that I can take your five loaves and two fish and break them and multiply them as I pray over them to feed thousands. The Lord says, this is the year where you take a step towards me and I'll take three steps towards you. The Lord says, this is the year where I move the mountains I, but this is the year I become the irresistible force that moves the immovable object, the Lord says. I will be irresistible to you. <laughs> Does anybody receive that in the Lord? Yes. All right. If you receive that and you believe that, say amen. 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 Hallelujah. God bless you. You stayed extra innings today, but wow. Hallelujah. God just released so much today. I'm just so thankful for what he did. Go into this year expecting. Be willing to do things differently. Step out in the areas that you're led by the Holy Spirit in that you've been timid in before. Now is the time. Amen. And you will shine like a star in the heavenly realms in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God bless you.